Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the war between the Tiny Rascal Gang and the Longos. In 1975, after the fall of Saigon, California started receiving its first Cambodian refugee groups. As with many refugee groups, ethnicity and limited English speaking ability helped create a barrier that isolated the refugee groups from society. These groups initially were not well accepted by the established street gangs and are often viewed as community outcasts by the general population. The Cambodian youths wanted to become westernized so that they could be accepted. This was against their traditional customs and ended up with the young Cambodians feeling resentment towards their families. The constant conflict between the young Cambodians and their families resulted in many running away to live on the streets. In addition, they were exposed to the gang life. Seeing the activities of the black and Latino gangs started to impact the Cambodian youth. The cities of Long Beach and Fresno became a relocation focal point for the refugees. By the mid 80s, Cambodian street youth started to band together for protection. These young kids realized they could be stronger together as a group. They could become the aggressors and not the victims. The Cambodian youth formed into several street gangs. It was out of these groups that TRG was formed. TRG was heavily influenced by one Latino gang, the Eastside Longos. From this gang, TRG adopted dress styles, graffiti writing, and more importantly, the gang behavior, such as when to fight and how to be a gang. TRG also adopted the use of guns and violence to protect their reputation. As far as their turf goes, TRG was always fluid, shifting from one area to the next when things got hot, always staying mobile throughout Long Beach. In the late 80s and early 90s, the back streets of this port city were the scene of a violent gang war between the Longos and Cambodian gangs. Residents had taken refuge in their home after dark, some turning off their lights for safety as carloads of young men with guns roamed the streets. Fears of violence dissipated the city's Cambodian population. Shops and restaurants lost business. Cambodian shop owners say they and their customers fear both the ethnic gang war, threats, and extortion of the Cambodian gangs themselves, which they say demanded protection money and raided the homes of the more well-to-do residents. In 1990, Long Beach was estimated to have 8,000 gang members. 4,000 were Hispanic and 800 were Cambodian, which was divided into five gangs in the low-income neighborhood where the drive-by war was continuing. Hispanic residents were also traumatized in fear of being caught in the crossfire. Racial tensions brewed between the two groups. Many longtime Mexican-American residents didn't want the newly arrived Cambodian immigrants in their community. The starting point of this war occurred in 1989 when a carload of TRG members got into a confrontation with the group of Longos on Cherry Avenue and Anaheim Boulevard. A TRG member produced a gun and proceeded to open fire, killing Oswaldo, who was only 16 years old. This death was the official kickoff to the years of bloodshed that followed. The back and forth shootings continued without a pause at motorists, at bicyclists, at pedestrians, killing or wounding gang members, their relatives, and passerbyers, and through the doors and windows of homes. Cambodian school children complained that they were tormented by groups of Hispanic gangsters who beat them or waved pistols at them as they waited at the bus stop. After the murder of Oswaldo, the Longos were seeking immediate retaliation, but had trouble locating the TRG members as they were very mobile and did not have a home base. But retaliation did come as Lonely from TRG was shot down shortly after by the Longos. The frustration in locating TRG members continued for the Longos, so they resorted to shooting and assaulting any Asian gangs. The Longos took it up a notch and targeted Asian civilians when they couldn't find any Asian gang members. The Asian gangs responded by also attacking Hispanic civilians, transforming the conflict into a race war. Racial epithets appeared on the walls in Long Beach that reflected this conflict. In the next 18 months that followed, more than 55 drive-by shootings have claimed victims, including 10 people shot to death. In an alternating series of revenge attacks, in March 26th of 1991, a brazen shooting left two Latinos injured. On April 1st, in an apparent retaliation, a group of Latinos shot three Cambodians, killing one of them. That following weekend, a Latino riding on a bicycle was shot by a group of Cambodians. As the on-site shootings intensified, the number of innocent victims began to skyrocket. On April 9th, around 10 p.m., Two Latino gang members entered a yard, aimed, and began to shoot at the upstairs apartment window. The two-bedroom apartment, which is located near Anaheim Street, in the heart of the city's Cambodian community, was shared by several Cambodian families. Bullets shattered the front window and hit Dung, Lucy, his four-year-old son, and his brother-in-law, Pra. Dung was shot in the upper body and staggered into the back bedroom, where he collapsed and died in his mother's arms. 17-year-old Dung and his mother had immigrated to the United States from Vietnam the year prior to escape the racial discrimination. His dream was to learn English, become an American citizen, and join the U.S. Army. Shortly after that, TRG murdered a few Mexican Tigers who had no affiliation to the Longos. Fast forward to 1993, in a dramatic show of muscle, the Mexican Mafia ordered all Serrano gangs to put a halt to drive-by shootings. 
But TRG and the Asian gangs didn't care to play by the Mafia's rules and continued doing drive-bys on the Longos in their homes. Rewind to 1992. The Longos kidnapped a Cambodian male in Long Beach. They jumped him, tortured him, and shot him a few times, and proceeded to show off his injuries to other Longos as a trophy. They placed him in the trunk of a car. Soon afterwards, the Cambodian male somehow managed to cause the car to crash while inside the trunk. The Longos members left him in the crashed car thinking he was dead, which he was later found by police alive. And this is how he got his nickname, Half Dead. He wasn't a gang member at the time, but soon after changed his life into a serial killer and went hunting Longos with his cousin, wearing a scream mask. Fast forward to May 15th, 1994. A TRG member in Half Dead, dressed in all black, began firing calmly from the sidewalk at Latino teenagers who were leaving a party, shooting six and killing three. Bodies laid in the street and in the cars. Witnesses said it was like a horror movie. The teenage victims were part of a dance club in South Central and drove down to Long Beach for a birthday party. They were unaware of the deadly back and forth exchange between Latino and Cambodian gangs in the area. In 1995, the Mexican Mafia greenlighted the TRG gang, which made them the first Asian gang to be greenlighted. Other Asian gangs were put on the list soon after. The primary reasons TRG got greenlighted was because of their reckless drive-by shootings that killed many non-gang affiliated Latinos and for disrupting the Mafia's drug operations in Long Beach. It's also said TRG knocked down Key Longo members, which further fueled the green light. The green light extended from the streets to the county jail and will result in TRG members getting beat up and killed while inside. The green light eventually included all Asian gangs in the county jail and in the streets. Additionally, the Mexican Mafia had the East Side Longos put aside their war against the West Side Longos and other Latino gangs to focus on the Asian and Black gangs in Long Beach. In response, Asian gangs in Long Beach also briefly put their beef aside to war up against the Longos. During the late 90s, many Asian families in Long Beach relocated to different cities, such as Santa Ana, Fresno, and Stockton, in an attempt to flee from the gang violence. During this period, the East Side Longos were able to regain territory. Between 1989 and 1994, around 40 people died and many more were injured. Many of the shootings were blamed on TRG, but in reality, other Asian gangs were sliding on the Longos, like the Asian Boys, Exotic Family City Crips, and Suicidal Town Crips. It was also said Asian gangs from different cities and states commuted to Long Beach to assist with the war against the Latino gangs. During the 2010s to the 2020s, the TRG vs. Longo war cooled down, with less casualties between the two. There's still occasional flare-ups. On December 29, 2019, at around 5.30 p.m., five TRG members were standing in front of an apartment complex when two Longos approached the group. One of the Longos yelled at the group and subsequently opened fire. Two people were shot and Goofy from TRG was pronounced dead a short time later. In present day, the Asian and Latino gang conflict isn't as intense as it was 30 years ago. The current ongoing racial gang war in Long Beach is between the Longos and the Cribs. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.